Hey, what's up everyone? It's Bean here. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys my Tiny Whoop Racing build. I've been flying FPV at this point for maybe around three years. Um, around two and a half years was the first race I was actually able to do laps. I'm still a pretty shit pilot, but at this point I've been flying around for long enough to where I can finally build one of these drones and I feel comfortable with sharing you guys my build. This build right here is coming in at around 15 grams, uh, costs around $150, and is a great entry to FPV if you've never built a drone before. I do highly recommend the Tiny Whoop class. Uh, you can fly it around in small spaces, you can rip it around in your backyard, and these things can really take a beating. So this build video is not only intended for guys who want to go into the pro Tiny Whoop racing scene, it's also intended if this is your first ever build, and I think this is a great stepping stone for anyone who's trying to get an FPV on a budget briefly before we go into our build uh, i want to go over some of the tools you're going to need for this job um, i'll have them listed over here but the big thing i want to talk about is getting a nice soldering iron because if i'm going to be honest secret to being good at soldering is having a good iron and personally what i've been using is this pine sill soldering iron it comes in at about 30 bucks off of amazon and it's really cool because it's not only powered by USB-C, so you can power it through like a phone charger, but also if you get a barrel jack to XT60 connector, you can power this thing in the field with up to a 6S LiPo, and it heats up pretty much instantly. Second thing I want to talk about is this E6000 glue, which we'll be applying to our VTX antenna connector to make sure that the VTX antenna is not going to come off the UFL during flight, because I've seen that break off so many times. So just using a little bit of this can really... Uh, Make sure that antenna doesn't come off. All right, let's get right into it. And the first component I want to highlight is the heart of the build, and that's your AIO. And it's this thing right in the center that you're pretty much soldering everything to. And the AIO I choose for my build is called the Beta FPV 4-in-1. What this does is it puts your flight controller, ESC, VTX, and OSD all into one board right here. And some people who are familiar with Whoops may be asking, why are we not using the 5-in-1 board? which also has a receiver built in. Well, there's two primary reasons. And the first and the biggest one is that the 401 is so much more durable than the 501. So the 401's shape is kind of like a diamond. And if you can see here, it doesn't extend to this front standoff. And the second reason is when you mount a receiver on the bottom here, um, it doesn't increase your weight at all if you, if you mount it correctly. So both the 501 and the 401 with a external receiver weigh about 4.9 grams. So we're essentially just getting free durability without any weight penalty. Now I'm showing you guys a close-up of the bottom of the whoop, as well as I can also show you guys the top of the whoop. So first of all, I want to talk about the soldering. Um, you guys should strive to have the joints looking like mine. Again, the pads covered in solder, uh, nice shiny joints, uh, no solder leaving the pads. And I would recommend you do all of your solder work before mounting it to the frame. So again, the components that you're going to be soldering are your motors, your receiver, which is mounted to the bottom here, and I have used double-sided mesh tape to mount my receiver. I have plugged in my camera, as you can see in the plug right there. Um, but I would highly recommend you direct solder it to the pads that are kind of hard to see here, but they're right below the receiver. If we zoom into right in here is where I soldered on my battery leads. And again, I use the stock BT 2.0. I took the little rubber backing off of the off the back of the BT 2.0 and that saves me about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 grams, just like that. I have made my own linear VTX antenna. Instead of using the dipole one provided, this saves me about 0.2 grams. And again, it's kind of hard to see, but I've applied a little bit of E6000 glue onto that UFL. So let's move on to the frame of this thing. And aside from having a nice, sexy, cherry red color, um, I'm a huge fan of how this frame flies. This is the Beta FPV Air 2 frame, and it's the Weebly FPV edition. Uh, coming in at only 2.55 grams, it is super light, and I've already flown quite a few packs on this, and it looks brand new. Uh, it's super stiff, super durable, has a great battery mounting system. Once you get everything soldered, so again, those are your four motors, your receiver, your camera optionally if you're not using the plug, as well as your battery connector, uh, it's time to actually mount this stuff to the frame. So I use the peak screws that you can get off of weedleadfpv.com. Peak is short for polyether, ether ketone. It is a high strength thermoplastic material that is used in a variety of engineering applications. But the reason why we're using it is because it could be used as a substitute for aluminum, 
in structural applications to save weight. That's exactly what we're doing on this tiny one. What we are going to do is we're going to use peak screws to mount the motors on the bottom here, as well as mount the AIO to the board. And one more thing to note on the peak screws is that the screws that I bought, at least from Weebleed, they're M1.4 by 4, which means that they're 4 millimeters long. Um, and for this whoop, you want to be using 3 millimeter screws. So what I ended up doing is I used my trusty wire cutters to essentially cut off the last millimeter of that screw. Again, it's about two to three threads if you want to kind of imagine it like that. Um, and by doing that, you make the screws to length and save just a little bit more weight. So I've done a lot of motor testing over these past nine months. And I've tried pretty much every motor on the market. And what would happen is I'd buy a super fast motor and I'd love how fast it would be. But then I would just keep breaking up. Or I would buy a motor that was marketed to be fast, then I'd try it, and I'd think it's slow. I couldn't find that balance of durability and speed. And finally, after testing these VCI motors, I found that motor. These are wicked fast, they're super durable, and honestly, I, I'm going to be using these on my builds in the future. This is the part of the build where what you build may differ from what I have. So what I put on my build are the new line of VCI motors. They're the VCI Pro Lights, and they are 30,000 kV. Now, if this is your first ever build or you don't have a lot of flying experience, that's going to be way overkill. Like those motors are going to be extremely powerful and you're not going to be able to tame them. So I'm going to throw a graphic on the screen detailing the three versions of this motor you can get. And the only difference is the KV rating, which is essentially how fast the motor goes per voltage of input. So the props I've gone with on this build are the HQ Prop Ultralights, specifically the 1.1 millimeter pitch version. Uh, I've done lap timer testing with pretty much every every prop on the market, um, and these ones right here were able to get me the lowest lap times. I think they're the lightest props on the market. They only weigh like 0.16 grams per prop. So if you're going to take this whoop to a bigger race like Whooptopia, I would highly recommend you swap these props for the 0.9 millimeter pitch version. Um, you'll probably get a little bit more flight time out of that, which will be imperative for some of those bigger trucks. When you're buying a Whoop battery, you want to look for two things. You want to know that it has a BT 2.0 connector on the end, and you also want to know that it's a square or folded cell design. I've been using the tattoos recently, as you can get them for pretty cheap off of Amazon, and I've also had great luck with the Weebly batteries, as well as the tiny Whoop 270 milliamp hours, which are just a little bit smaller and lighter and great for race cow style tracks. And the last thing I want to talk about in this Whoop is the camera. So I'm running the tiny Whoop Pinch which is not only super light, but it has the perfect FOV, and I really like the way the picture looks in the goggles. I am using the T-Dog 42.069 degree mount. It's in the Briar family mounts. I'll link that all down below. Typically, Whoop Racers use anywhere from a 40 degree up tilt to a 45 degree up tilt. I think 42 is right nice in the middle, and if you don't know what camera mount to run, I suggest starting at 35 and working your way up. Now it's time to configure a drone in beta flight. Before we go and change some of the settings, I quickly want to go over the update firmware tab. So you always want to flash your board to the newest stable release of Betaflight. So in our case, we'll hit auto detect, and we'll actually flash 4.51. 4.6 is coming around the corner, and I'm excited to try that out. But for now, this is the, the recent stable release. I like to include Race Pro and my other options. This lets me change my throttle and motor limit really quickly using the Smart Audio menu. So to flash our firmware, we'll hit load firmware online, and then we'll click fast firmware on the bottom here. It's time to configure our drone. So honestly, I really don't touch much in Betaflight aside from basic setup. So I flash a few presets to my Whoop before I even go in there. So we're gonna go in the presets tab, and we're gonna flash our tune. And I find that the Karate Brushless Whoop is a pretty solid tune. So we'll go in here and check all the things that apply to our Whoop. In our case, we're using a 3 bladed prop and D-Shot 300 as we are running a 4K PID, up PID update loop rate. That's hard to say. <laughs> um, so yeah, we definitely want to set 12 pulls for our Whoop motors. And I checked this dynamic idle for 1S. I also like having VBAT SAG compensation enabled as Whoop batteries are very, very subjective to SAG. I personally run ELRS 500 on my Whoops, but I know most people will run 250. Uh, if you're a crazy person and love low latency, you're going to click 1,000. And that's pretty much all I select here. So I'll pick that and I'll flash her. The next preset I'll flash are the AOS 65mm filters. 
Now this will overwrite the filters created by the Karate Tune, but I will say that the AOS filters are a little more aggressive and on a clean build like this, it's noticeable increase in performance. I'll flash the Beta FPV Air Brushless FC 4 one VTX table. Uh, sometimes after a clean flash, my smart audio won't work. And every time I flash this, it seems to work. So now we'll go into the rate profiles. And rates are entirely subjective, but will drastically impact how your quad feels when you're flying. So listed here are my rates. They're a little aggressive for beginners. So if you're a beginner, I kind of recommend going with a rate profile that looks like that you'll, what you'll see here. If you look at my throttle curve preview, it's not linear. It's almost like a banana shape. And the reason behind that is that we're using 96 kilohertz as our PWM update frequency. And this allows us to have a more efficient build. But by running 96 kilohertz, you don't have a linear thrust profile. So by setting your throttle mid to 1.0 and your expo to 0.25, that smooths out your thrust profile. So you'll get a much more linear throttle response. I love on whoops to use throttle limits. So to do that, you'll come in here, you'll hit scale and then you'll set your throttle limit to whatever you want. You can also do this on your OSD using the Race Pro feature. For a variety of reasons, I wrote a props out configuration, so I'm gonna make sure I check this box right out here to reverse the direction of our motors. I also run bi-directional D-Shot on our Whoop. We're running Blue Jay on this Whoop, so we'll be able to use bi-directional D-Shot, which allows to use RPM filtering and it'll make our Whoop fly a lot better. Now I'm showing you guys my Blue Jay settings. So I've gone ahead and flashed the newest release of Blue Jay on my whoops, as well as 96 kilohertz for my PWM frequency. I like to set my motor timing to 15 degrees, and if you have any desync issues, I bring it back down to 22.5, but personally with the AIO 4-in-1s that I use from Beta FPV, I've had no desync issues. And that's how I build my tiny whoops. They're super lightweight, super punchy, really fun time to fly in. They're durable, so if you crash a lot like me, you're not going to have to repair this thing every five seconds. I want to give a special shout out to Weebleed FPV. Um, most of the stuff I got off this build was off their website. Super great guys over there. They're really into growing the Whoop community and keeping drone racing alive. But I've been talking for long enough. I think it's time we finally show you guys this thing flying. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Weebleed!